Alright, welcome to the next Ask Us Anything. Ask Us Anything. I hear today's question comes from Razor. Who came on our Steamboat Springs retreat, a good friend of ours, and is an ambassador. And is really cool. He's one of the goofiest Mo's I've ever met. <laughs> yeah, and I would definitely uh, diagnose him with um, social, some kind of social anxiety. Oh man. E man. Camera down. Hold on. Me and Razor share this challenge that I like to call social anxiety. Thanks, Razor, for sharing that with me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, this is the question of the day. What are your thoughts on a person sharing their sexual shames with their parents and their parents sharing theirs with their kids? And you guys share yours with your parents. I feel like that's some good questions. Mm -hmm. It's a really appropriate question because we just had this conversation two nights ago with our parents. And we shared a lot of sexual shame with them. I shared everything that would make me the most uncomfortable with my parents. And I gotta say, I can't imagine if I had not have done that. I feel so much closer with my family afterwards. It's super important. Firstly, I would like to, for anyone considering this, I got a little berry in my teeth. Our parents had sex with each other to make us. And do you know how many times they probably had sex before you were made? Lots and lots of times, hopefully. You came. You are, you are an offspring. You are a product of their sexual intercourse. Your dad stuck his penis in your mom's vagina and ejaculated inside of her. Over and over. This is not, I'm not trying to be uh, awe and shock you. This is reality. I am trying to awe and shock you a little bit. But this is the reality of nature. And if you can't have that talk with the people that made you through God's blessings, then, uh, then you have a lot more to talk about than just that. When you, uh, when you speak openly with your parents about your sexual history, um, you'll find that it is the catalyst for all other sorts of conversation. So even though it's very uh, difficult and uncomfortable, you are now opening the doors and the space to be completely transparent with your family about anything. Yeah. Let me tell you something about sexual thoughts, desires, just shame in general. You think you're weird, right? Like you've had some weird stuff going on. Well, you're not weird, okay? I probably had some of the similar thoughts that you have, and it's just a universal thing. We get pretty freaking weird when it comes to sexual stuff. It's just a part of human nature. I'm not saying that we should act on any of it. I'm saying that we should suppress most of our weird sexual desires. However, you are not alone. Okay? Yeah, a lot of times what we fear talking about is not nearly as bad as the fear itself. You gotta go there. If you can't go there with your parents, how do you expect to go there with other people farther in your life? These are the people, once again, that had sex to make you. So, yes, please, please share not only your sexual shame with your family, but like Timothy alluded to earlier, the name of the game and the exercise we did with our family is the confession session, where we basically just talk about the things that we don't want to talk about, the things that we thought might ruin our relationship, the ones where they thought that we were so weird they wouldn't know how to connect to us. We just talk about that Basically, that's it. And you know what's pretty crazy about that? What's weird is that that's actually what connects us the most, especially in this emotional dark age that the United States is pulling themselves out of right now because of the help of people like us. In a, uh, in a past video, Daniel said something that I really liked when he said, uh, talk about the things that you don't want to do and don't talk about the things that you do want to do, such as your goals and stuff. And how cool would it be as a, a parent-to-child relationship to be able to openly discuss uh, their sexual, uh, their sexual <laughs> desires and things that they're dealing with sexually, such as a kid, like a, a boy growing up through puberty, is thinking about like just it's such like a mysterious place that he wants to, he may almost just want to act on it just because he can't, he doesn't know what it's about, you know. But if he can openly discuss it with his parents, then um, yeah, yeah, it's know. very normal. Like this, this plant right here, the stem, it's probably having sexual desires about me right now, and. It's just normal. Um, the thing is, if we want to give ourselves the best chance to be loved or to actually know what love is, look guys, you have to fully be known. You have to be known completely. And you also have to be willing to see other people completely. To be fully, fully known and fully accepted. 
I don't know. You know, it's a good it's a good shot that you might experience love in that. For example, the last thing that I said, I feel like it didn't make any sense, but I felt compelled to say something because I feel like I need to talk enough. And um, yeah. Yeah, if you don't give yourself the permission to make mistakes <laughs> and say things you don't mean, then how are you going to give yourself the permission to say things that are really meaningful? Come on, people. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, raise our great question. And how do they start this conversation? Hey, show your parents this video. And I know there might be some kind of humor and sarcasm we threw in there. But really, this is a very meaningful conversation that needs to be had. Especially with your parents, especially at your younger age, talk about sex. For your parents out there, tell, talk to your kids about sex and invite them. Keep that open door that d door open. Tell them how you had sex to have them mm -hmm. and that these desires are going to pop up literally for women usually younger, <laughs> earlier than men. And this is a conversation that we need to have. We need to have sex talk. And it doesn't have to be weird and beat around the bush. <laughs> But uh, get straight to it in a fun, loving way. That's right. Daniel Vitalis actually, his last podcast was all, his last, uh, what do you call it, dispatch was all about re rewilding your sexuality. And yeah, we're going to keep doing these questions. So ask us anything, post them on our Facebook page. Nathaniel actually had a great one about sex before marriage. Yesterday we had a great one about money. Today we have one about sharing your uh, shame, your sexual shame with your parents. Great idea. Thanks, Razor. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you want to know how I deal with my sexual issues or sexual, like my lustful desires, then that's another video too. <laughs> right, oh yeah, go. another question I have for you guys is, do you guys like us when we uh, answer all these questions together or do you prefer us answering it by ourselves? What do y'all want? Oh, I'm so happy Tell you brought you that want. up. Because there's a few people that comment on our videos pretty consistently. And I think Shu G might be one. And I just want to send out some love to you. And thank you for that. And it actually, it may have even sparked, or at least it's very parallel to the conversation we were having last night about the masculine and feminine energy and how when we had this idea that are women here to destroy men? They were making that joke, and I was like, yes, they are actually. In a way, it's not to destroy. You can think of it that way. But for the strong man, for the strong masculine energy, and masculine and feminine doesn't always equate to man and woman, but the feminine here is to test you, to make you sure that you are strong enough to have sex with them and have their children and support their children. So they're going to throw every test they can. This goes for the men, or the masculine people in particular. They're going to throw every test at you possible to make sure that if you aren't strong enough by the time they want to have children with you, that you will get strong enough. And think about nature as being this feminine energy. Which mountain has more men on it? Mount Everest or just the little hill over the road? More strong men spend more time on Mount Everest. What waves have the more strong masculine men spending time on them? The big, scary waves. Mm. So as a man, hold that ground. And what I meant, where I, I want to tie this to is I want to thank Shu Ji for keep testing us. I love the people that leave challenging comments. That's where the growth takes place. So yeah, if you're going to leave any comment, or if you're up on the fence to leave a comment, leave one that's challenging for us. Ask us a good question. So thank you, man, or a woman, whoever you are. We love you. Anything else? That's all for today. I have a lot more else, but we'll just save it for next time. Ask us anything. Ask us anything.